Moviegoers often remember you as the guy who shot John Wayne in the movie Cowboys. This is true. But, but you have done many, many memorable roles in a lot of film classics, and you were nominated for an Oscar for your work in Coming Home. Right. Talk about the two or three performances that you yourself consider to be your best. Well, uh, coming home, I was very proud of. I don't judge performances really on the basis of, uh, I can't judge what is best in terms of, I, I am what I am in every movie. Some characters are much more likable than others, and people might judge that as, you know, being best or not, but that's not the criteria I look at. Uh, um, I, I, I'm proud of my work in Coming Home. I'm proud of my work in The Cowboys. I'm proud of my work in Black Sunday, Silent Running, Smile, yes. Yes. The King of Marvin Gardens, The Great Gatsby. So many. Um, so many. Well, now, in things I've said, I think that's one of the most honest books that I've ever read. Oh, thank you. Um, and it decide to write your memoir? Oddly enough, I, I think what it was when, when I first came to Hollywood, my entire generation of actors and actresses was extremely lucky that we came at a time when we still got to work with the legends. The legends were still active and working. For me, it was Montgomery Cliff, Betty Davis, yes. Olivia de Havilland, John Wayne, um, whoever they were. Uh -huh. And uh, I think the thing that was lucky because of that, um, it instilled in us a work ethic that made me have a certain kind of respect for a hierarchy that I was really much less familiar with than I was with the Broadway hierarchy. Yes. And I talk in that chapter in the book about opera, and uh, not legitimate opera, but the opera of life, the opera of the arena, so to speak, and watching the Lunts come into the theater and what opera that meant to me and seeing the, the history of the American theater come out of a limousine every night, each one of them with a poodle in each arm. Well, that gave me a feeling of what it really was like. And the fact that Mr. Kazan, who was my mentor, who was watching it with me, could actually say, I'll never be that. Even though I'm the biggest director in the business today, both in the theater and movies, I'll never be what the Lunts are. Because wow. I'm a landed immigrant from Turkey. This is wow. Kazan talk. Yes, yes. And they're the Lunts. That's the American theater. And it so touched me. I thought, you know, I want to share that with people. I want to share the greatness of the people that have touched my life. Not that I've accomplished anything so great, but I've been around a lot of heavyweight kind of folks yes. and I just thought I'd like to share it I mean I come from a household where uh, from the age of 6 to 17 I had to raise my hand to be called on to speak at my dinner table you had to raise I had to do like this and my mother or father would call on me otherwise I had to keep my mouth shut and uh, that was grim but then as you read in the book and you realize that people were uh, quite heavyweight in terms of what they had to say and uh, my family right. around my family that what Brucey had to say really wasn't all that interesting especially from the first grade through the senior year in high school and it was not the first thing that anybody wanted to hear about how Brucey's day went you know so Brucey started embroidering make his day a little more interesting <laughs> a little more important and that's really where I got any kind of storytelling ability I had and I just thought, you know, if I write all this down, if at least if I share this, and because of Chris Fryer and Bob Crane, the 
two guys that wrote the book with yes. me, uh, being able to stay awake during the hundred hours or so of tapes that we made, um, it was, uh, I was able to do it. Yes, I mean, I failed great. typing in high school, so I can't actually can't write the stuff out. <laughs> I, I have to have it recorded. Are there, are there a lot of differences between being an actor or and a writer, or are there? Huge. Huge. Huge, yeah. What, patience. How are they different? I think as a writer, you have to have enormous patience. You have to have an enormous amount of a different kind of ego, because you're writing to an unknown audience. You're writing, you're just writing for yourself, basically. And with me, it was writing just to be able to get it out, to actually get it out. Actually, uh, my writer here, Ashley Reed, who wrote the screenplay that Laura, my daughter, Laura yes. Dern, and my ex-wife, Diane Ladd, are doing a movie together called Heart's Location, which Ashley wrote. And um, we've never worked together. Diane and Laura have worked together three times, and each time, Diane's been nominated for Academy Award, and once Laura's been nominated, but Laura and I have never, ever worked together. So I decided to direct it and, and star in it with them. And um, it's because so often in life we have chances to say things and don't take advantage to say the things we mean when the people are right in front of us and I've regretted the fact that a lot of times I should have said things I didn't say so I thought I'll write a book about things that I did say but maybe shouldn't have as well I maybe should have what was the toughest thing about writing this book? well the toughest thing is you're by yourself but I was lucky because I'm actually saying it to two people. I'm recording it. I mean, you know, I'm talking to two guys who are going to have to get it in some kind of edited form. I can talk and tell the stories. I have a really good memory that way. But to edit it, I'm uneditable. I just drone on and tell you, you get bed sores. Um, and, and whether it's interesting or not is really not my concern as a writer because as an actor, that's my concern but as a writer I just figure well somebody will know when to close the book or cut me off <laughs> and so you're gonna win either way they're either gonna get you know I can just tell shut them it that they'll never shut the yeah, book once they it. start you know. well, well now you started out to be an Olympic runner you that yeah. was how you started what happened uh, what happened was there were people that were a lot better than I was and uh, I was good um, but never was great um, and and uh, actually uh, ran into a kid from Baylor and ran into another kid from the University of Texas who showed me the uh, elephant was in the room with me. And uh, I finally decided, and then a little later on, uh, in the mid-50s, uh, I started, the, uh, the brothers uh, decided to move up from running the 100 and 200 meters to the 400 meters and then run up to my event, the 800 meters. and. Uh, it, it, it's all about the distances I ran were all about leg speed, turnover. How quickly can you get the legs to turn over and go? And they are really tremendous at that. The well, now kids. what made you go into acting, though? Well, um, it's an expressive form. Uh, running for me has always been creative energy. What do you think about fame and wealth? You mean, what do I think about? Well, maybe as opposed to talent and hard work. Well, talent, hard work saves the day every time. I mean, fame and wealth have nothing to do with it. Um, I don't know Miss Hilton. Um, I think she's probably got a great deal of talent. She's got too much game not to have a lot of talent. But I'm not really into fame junkies. And uh, to me, she's a bit of a fame junkie, as I guess Miss Lohan is a fame junkie. I don't know. But they seem to always be in the limelight. And I can't think that as, as crazed as the paparazzi can get, that they really are with them that much, that they're catching them every second. I got to think the people put themselves in situations where they're going to get right. their pictures where they're taken. Gonna get yeah, caught. right. Well, now you said in the book, we are our moments. What have been your highest moments? Well, 
I've loved the book tour. I've absolutely really? loved it. I love this. I love the fact that I can sit across from a great looking dad who can say to me, as prepared as she is, as fabulous as she is, uh, that you've done your homework, you're asking me questions nobody's asked me in a long time, and uh, I get a kick out of, it's not talking about myself just, it's the fact that, you know, we're gonna share this with a lot of people. And you got game, babe. I mean, you, you no, I mean, you're, you're, you're onto it, you get it, and you get it like that. And that's what's fun. Uh, it's the tooth pulling times that aren't fun, but I haven't come across that. In, and maybe it's because uh, books are more academic in a way than the movie business, maybe that the, the critics and the book people and the interviewers and the people that do this are more excited by the project and have a genuine interest, whereas movie going fans uh, are a little different and have a different kind of an audience, but to write a book is a bigger, uh, is actually a bigger obligation to their audience than I think uh, an actor's obligation is to a movie or a theater audience. You're responsible, you're responsible for the fact you better have been awake in English class, you better have been awake in the spelling class, and uh, to be an actor, you just kind of get by with being awake and sometimes not even being awake. You know? <laughs> Bruce, I want to thank you so much for being with oh, us. Oh, well, today. thank you. I appreciate thank it. And thank you for your game. <laughs> Here's Rita. Thank you. You're welcome, darling. Thank you.